Amen. Thank you all for the divine love, divine guidance, help, healing energy, and divine protection. Thank you for blessing us with a loving heart, an intelligent mind, and a powerful will that we may be of service to humanity. We thank you in full faith. So be it. Then. All right. I did not come into energy healing work by choice. What happened was in 1988, my wife fell from 14 feet, which is close to double this, straight on the hard concrete. And because of that, she broke her hip bone. If you look at a skeleton, you'll notice there's two little holes, you know, by the hip area. In her case, the right side separated like that, okay? So after one week of pulling it out with sandbags in the hospital, once it's even, the doctor said they'll take three and a half months before she can even put weight on it. We were in the Philippines at that time, and I said, no way, that's too long. So the doctor said, there's nothing you can do. That's when I met my teacher, Grandmaster Chua Hok Sui. And I went in and took the class, the same class that we're coming back to teach, which you guys have the brochure on. And I took it out of desperation. The reason I say desperation is something like this. Okay? Everybody rub your hands together. Do you want tonight to be lecture or experiential? Experiential. Oh, you should answer both. OK. Like this? Like this? Okay, that's good for now. Follow me, press the center of your palm. Press and press. To make it experiential, we need to let you feel energy first. So put your hand this way. Keep your tongue on your palate. Keep it on your own palate. You ready? Just focus in the center of your palm. Everyone, keep your tongue in your palate. Exhale. Focus on your palms. Inhale. Exhale. Just try to feel the energy in between your hands. Now, the question is, what are you doing? You're trying to sense the energy that flows through your body, okay? Now, if you don't feel anything, it doesn't mean you're dead. It just means you're not sensitive. Okay, shake it. Share, are you right? Yes. Yeah, I remember. Okay, everybody, raise your hands. Not that high, you're not surrendering. Just like this. <laughs> okay, look at her, say sharing. Sharing. You know what, I got a better idea. Visualize her standing right in front of you. Say sharing. Sharing. We'd like to feel your energy level. We'd like to feel your energy level. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Just do your best. Just form the intention. Here's the secret. When your hands are there, wait for the feeling to come. How we can feel sort of a something? That's good enough. Don't, you know, we're not looking for flashing lights or, you know, <laughs> fire coming down from heaven. You know, just a sensation. Yes? yes. Okay, good. Keep feeling. Cross your arms. Anybody could feel something different? Yeah. Yeah. Uncross. Yeah. Okay, cross again. How many of you could feel a difference? We're not looking for how, how much, but at least some difference, yes? yes? Okay, uncross. Okay, thank you. What you're feeling is the life force that flows through your body. People call it chi in Chinese. They call it ki in Japanese. How many of you practice reiki? Rei means universal, and then ki is energy. Now, if you study, if you study the, the word itself, Rei in Japanese, actually in Chinese means Ling or Soul, which is universal or soul energy. You get my point though. Then in Sanskrit, obviously, that's why we call it pra, pranic healing from the word prana. In Hawaii, if you talk to the Polynesians, they call it mana. You remember mana from heaven? So when I met him in 1988, I took the class, and basically was very skeptical from the start. I'm an engineer by trade, and a very devout Southern Baptist by religion. <coughs> Try putting the two together. So I took the class anyway, worked on her three times a day. In two weeks, she could walk. In five weeks, she ran across the room. Now, all of that was done while I was skeptical the whole time. Plus, do you know some of you could at least feel something in your hand? I didn't feel anything. For four years, I didn't feel a single thing. I was already teaching the class. Everybody in the class claims to be able to feel it, except the guy teaching the class. <laughs> so most people ask, why did you even continue? Being an engineer, what counts is results. You have an energetic anatomy. That energy, that energetic, anatomy, energetic anatomy consists of the chakras and the aura. If you do not have chakras or aura, people could project negative thoughts at you all day long and nothing will happen. It is because you have an energy field, you have the chakras, that's why you respond to this negative energy. If you keep shooting negative energy at the blank wall, nothing happens. Since we're in Silicon Valley, we might as well use some of the things I've studied many years ago. 
How many remember what is called the right hand rule? I'll give you a clue. It involves your right hand. <laughs> Tough crowd. Okay, let's keep it right. right hand rule. If there's a battery here, there's a light bulb. If you take your right hand, the thumb represents the direction of the current. The fingers represent the direction of the magnetic field. Now you're saying, who cares? What's it got to do with energy healing? Any acupuncturist here? Anybody has heard about the puncture? Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right. When you go see an acupuncturist, the way they twirl the needle is based on the right hand rule. Basically, it's like this. If they want to put energy into your body, they will twirl the needle to the right. They call it uh, tonifying. Okay? If they want to take energy out of your body, they go counterclockwise, they call it sedating. So when you look at the way they twirl the needle, you know if they're putting energy in or taking it out. When you watch martial arts, assuming they know what they're doing, it's also based on energy symbol. Look at my hand. When your chakra is absorbing energy, it goes clockwise. When it's releasing energy, it goes counterclockwise. Right hand rule. Okay, let me put you in a everyday term. Righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. How many heard that before? If you want to tighten something, you go to the right. If you want to loosen something, you go to the? Yeah. Okay, that's right hand rule. Clear? Now, inhale. Inhale. Inhale for the next 50 years. <laughs> Can you do it? No. What would you have to do? You have to exhale to inhale. So your chakras cannot only go in one direction. You'll explode. Your chakras cannot also go another other direction. You get drained. It's because these chakras spin in both directions that you maintain homeostasis, which is called the aura. You hear me so far? Yes. Now, it's something like this. If you believe, and science believes, that current going through a piece of wire will generate a magnetic field, why would it be so hard to believe that life current going through your chakras and your meridians will not produce a human magnetic field? So what you call the human magnetic field is essentially what people call the aura. Your aura actually has several layers. You have the inner aura, you have the outer aura, and the rays of light shooting out. Now, first rule in psychic protection is strengthen the energy field. In other words, before you work with anything outside, you want to work with what you have. Now, did you notice when uh, Sherry was up here, when she crossed her arms, what happened to her energy level? It dropped, right? Actually, it did not drop. It compressed. Okay, come here. It's okay. All right, everybody raise your hands. Imagine Sherry right in front of you. See, if we had a bigger room, you would be practicing with your partner. But since we don't, we have to do the best we can. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Now, visualize Sherry right in front of you. Say, Sherry. Sherry. Energy level. Energy level. Okay. Just try to feel the aura. Just do your best. Cross your arms. How we notice a drop? Do your best. Now follow it. Just kind of follow it close to her body. Now this is what I want you to do. Gently push. How many can feel like a bouncy feeling? Who, who knows a bouncy feeling? Okay. Put your hand down. It's like this. When you cross your arms, the aura, which is normally way out here, compresses. When it compresses, the particles become tighter. When it becomes tighter, it becomes more of a barrier for something to penetrate. 